Today on an interview with, we are quite literally chatting with a man who is living and sleeping with the enemy. I am the Invertiberian. Thank you ever so much for joining us. And we are joined today with none other than... Scott from Scott's Inverts. Scott from Scott's Inverts. How are you today, sir? I'm, I'm pretty good, thank you. Yourself? I can't complain, can't complain. I've got coffee... I've got somebody to chat to. It's all good. I've got so, coke, coke in a can. <laughs> coke in a can. I was careful. We'll get to that later on, mate. Uh, so, Scott of Scott's Inverts, uh, it's not up to me to do this next part. It's up to you to describe your channel. That is your first part of this. Oh, my God. Um, it's invert-related channel. Um, I like to try and keep the you know, content um, creative as much as I can, get as much variation in there. So there's there's a couple of unboxing um, videos in there. There's care videos, um, invert shows when they're on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like, like to include um, Layla in the, on the channel. She's 10. Um, all the videos, there's no swearing or anything like that. So they're all family friendly. That was one of the intentions from the start. Um, the live streams are over 18s because there is swearing and topics that are for children. But the rest of the rest of the content, I just try to do it as much as I can. Make make try and get inverts, you know, family friendly videos, and try and get some more interest. Yeah, on on setting your questions, obviously, I had to try and bear in mind that there's a, a possibility uh, she would be watching this, so I had to be quite careful about. But I don't know. We, we'll see where it goes. Um, so what are your goals for the channel? What have been your inspirations in, in doing your YouTube channel? Ooh, the goals. I'm, I'm not really, I'm not setting any goals as such. Um, and I, I never really, I never really have. It's just, I'm just letting it go where it wants to, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I think if I set a goal, then it kind of limits me. Yeah, fair enough. What, what's been your inspirations then? What's what's kind of inspired you, or what continues to inspire you as you're as you're creating your videos? It's um, just the positive feedback I get off quite a lot of people, and the fact that they say that you know themselves and their children watch that that is a massive driving force, and obviously subscribe account going up. Um, <clears throat> but what started it started it the the reasons for it was. Um, couple of people just kept trying to push me and push me and push me and in the end I said yeah yeah I'll have a go and I did and originally it was just the channel was originally set up just purely for me to upload videos as as, as just more, more of a place for storage than anything so the the very early videos are just literally there's a spider and then a, a cricket or something just gets thrown at it and that's it <laughs> you know and then I did a couple of videos with myself in front of the camera which were in my opinion, they're rubbish. <laughs> and then slowly and slowly just got got to where it is now. With those, the first videos, I was, I was like that nervous. It was unreal. Yeah, it's a, it's a very nervous uh, kind of thing. How long have you been keeping then from when you got your first spider? How, how many do you now own? And over what time duration has that built up? Um, I started collecting, it'd be two years this September. And, um, oh man, it was crazy how it happened because, I mean, I've always had an interest in nature and what have you, and uh, always wanted, always had that interest in, in UK spiders more than anything, just sort of following them around, watching them in the garden and stuff like that. And one of my, one of my friends, his, his, his cousin, um, it's a strange story, is being thrown out of home. And what his parents did was they chucked two spiders, his two spiders, on the drive in their containers. And literally said, oh, you, you've just got to come and get them. But he went into, like, um, it was, I think it was under 21's hostel, but they wouldn't let him have them. So he asked me if, if, if I'd have them. And I said, yeah, yeah, of course. Not. So I was looking after him. And then he said, well, do you want to buy them? So I did. And literally, from that point on, I come across the Facebook groups, um, watched people like um, Exotic Slayer, Dark Den, and then obviously moved on to the better channels like yourself, Gar Reese, and... Um, you know, discovered that you, you don't keep spiders in a certain way. Do you know what I mean? You have to do your absolute research on yeah. them. And since then, it's just gone off and off and off. And thanks to mystery boxes and friends and 
Yeah, the collection is just now exploded. I think I counted 100 and it was 130 yesterday, just in spiders. Plus, obviously, got all the other inverts. That's a bobs. Yeah. And what would be your dream animal if you've if you've not already got it in the collection? Um, obviously, no rules apply, no DWA. If you, what would be your dream animal to add if, if it's not something you've already got? Oh, I mean, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind uh, like a venomous snake. Um, obviously, the enemy has already said no to a venomous snake. Um, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind the the Brazilian wandering spider. Um, again, you know the missus, the enemy. She's kind of gone. Mm, no, no to anything with licenses just yet. Uh, mind you, she has said once the kids have sort of moved out, then that could be a possibility. You could build them a hut out in the garden and go and let the kids live out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like summon off a Lord of the Flies. <laughs> and what what what's your biggest no no? What's what wouldn't you even contemplate? For what? With, 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 for keep, for keeping. What, what, what for you is a big. What, what would you just if somebody offered you subject A, and you, what would it be that would make you go? No, I'm not having that. Oh, another dog. All right, okay. Yeah, by far, by far. Yeah. No, say I know. Obviously, you keep centipedes, but I know you used to be somewhat fearful of them. Fearful? That's an understatement. <laughs> I, I, I happen to know that if, if somebody was to send you a photograph of a centipede, you would throw your phone away and refuse to touch it until the photo was deleted. That's true, yeah. That's I know it is. <laughs> yeah, my best mate, my best mate um, him and his partner, are literally, uh, we're close as family. And his missus knew that... Um, and so did he. That obviously I hated hated the sight of centipedes. Couldn't go anywhere near them and all the rest of it. And they literally just used to send me pictures. And I had to pass my phone to the missus for her to delete them because I just couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> they used to absolutely terrify me. At least you've overcome that because you do obviously now keep uh, centipedes in your place. At this point in time, I did think about just like holding up a picture of a centipede just to get a reaction out of you. But I know you're all right with it now. <laughs> Have you got any plans for the channel that you're willing to share with us? Any any big projects on the way? Anything exciting that we could get a little spoiler on? Or um, I'm looking at getting some more true spiders. Mm -hmm. um, they should be coming towards the end of the month, I think. Um, I'm also the table that's it. That's always this table. That's always in 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 the in, on the channel. That's being swapped out for a desk. Um, it's a black desk, so when you take the photos, hopefully the black will absorb it instead of instead of um, throwing the flashback at the camera, so yeah. I can get some better pictures, especially uh -huh. with the lights and stuff. Yeah, um, and because my whole my whole collection's in the kitchen, I'm getting rid of the kitchen table. Um, get rid of the kitchen. <laughs> oh, I would if I could. I'd just have a microwave <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> yeah, it's going to save us about two foot of space, which means a lot in this house <laughs> you're obviously a fan of a microwave because i'll get round to this shortly but i did notice in amongst your likes uh one of them was something along the lines of have you ever stabbed a shit out of a microwave meal yeah so you're obviously a fan of the old microwave meal but we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll digress back to that later on uh, so give us if you will the name of three channels you think are underrated uh, and deserve more recognition on YouTube. Um, eight legs, four wheels, definitely, definitely. Greg is highly underrated, and uh, nowhere near enough credit goes to that man. Um, I think, I think he is for um, guys and girls in wheelchairs. He must be, you know, an absolute inspiration. And there's got to be thousands of people out there that, you know, face life with disadvantages that, that don't even know he's there. And yeah. I think as soon as they do realise that that man's there, that, you know, they could then think, I can actually have a spider. This man's got it. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's an absolute inspiration and the man's got a heart of gold. Yeah. Absolute yeah. heart of gold. Um, the other one is um, Raw, well, Rennie's Raw Reptile. Um, she's only... I think she's only got about sort of 15 subscribers. She's 
she's not been going too long. Um, but the girl's an absolute diamond. Um, you know, she she's she she suffers with a bit of mental health, but you know, it's not not down to me to to say what. Uh, and then obviously the third one is um, I think I think this man is highly rated amongst his fans. But this this guy should be up there. He, he should he should be uh, past the dark den when subscribers count, and that's Gar East. Mm. Um, that man should should literally have millions of subscribers yeah. um, because absolutely the, his the way he looks on the on the spiders, the treatment of his spiders, his husbandry, um, and the fact that you know you can just inbox him and he might not go back to yeah. you straight away, but he will get back to you. Um, you Easy, yeah. Him, any questions? He's uh, literally his, his knowledge is it, phenomenal. Oh, crazy, it's crazy just... amount of knowledge, and, and crazy as well. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Lunatic very, Welshman. About <laughs> I better not say too much because I'm I'm planning on doing hopefully some. Uh, um, but yeah, absolutely, guys, guys. Brilliant, brilliant, he's, amazing channel. He just. And he does not. Yeah, he doesn't pull his punches. He just he says it as it is, and he's. I think you know, there's no beating about the bush. There's no fannying about. No, um, no, no, definitely not. What What's been your biggest regret then? If you on on your YouTube journey. Ooh, probably not starting the channel soon enough, and um, probably not. Well, definitely like. Um, the first few videos where I'm in front of the camera, I'm so nervous, it's unbelievable. Um, oh, pardon me. So that's a, the, I think the biggest regret is not doing it sooner. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other, the other regrets are probably like comparing um, my channel to other people's, yeah. um, looking at what they're doing and thinking, oh shit, I should, I should be doing, doing what they're doing as well. Whereas really, it's my channel, it's about me and it's about my inverts. And it's about what direction I'd like to go. Um, it did take me a little while to kind of understand that. Um, and nowadays, I mean, one of the changes I've done is you don't see me opening a box <laughs> anymore because I just don't, I don't, you know, everybody does it, you know, and you, and you waste 30 seconds of, of a clip of, of somebody pulling out a knife and cracking it all open. So I like to have the, you know, the boxes already open, you know, that type of stuff. Um, yeah, I think, I think that those are my, my, my regrets. Definitely, it's it's, it's difficult as a, I, I sometimes find it difficult as as a content creator. You do want to support other channels. You want to watch other channels. You want to comment and be seen on other channels to show your support to them. But it's very difficult then not to be influenced sometimes by what they're doing or, or ideas other people have come up with. Definitely, definitely. Well, I think as as you kind of get into the, get further into the YouTube hobby, uh, well, the YouTube sorry and the hobby, um, I think you know who who can help you, and then who can keep you where you are, for want of better words, or um, maybe maybe pull you into a direction that you you don't want to be going down. You know, um, I mean, like at the very start of my my invert journey, well before YouTube, I was watching like an exotics lair. And dark den. So if I'd have started the channel then and just had those as influences, maybe you know I would have had. This is how to annoy your tarantula video would have been out. Um, but yeah, but but since then obviously you know I, I don't annoy my tarantulas. I understand about the stress and everything else now. And yeah, well that's down to like listening to people like Gar and yourself mm -hmm. as opposed to the, the the big sort of how many views can we get yeah, yeah. the channels? Do you know what I mean? So, what's been your best memory? With you know, what's been your favourite moment thus far? Obviously, there's there's a lot, a lot still to come, but thus far, what what springs to mind? What what's been a really enjoyable moment for you? Um, the invert shows as a YouTuber. Um, I mean, you know, it might might sound big headed, but getting recognised at a show is just absolutely phenomenal. And and you know, to, to be recognised and to be chat to people that have put comments. So it, it's strange because a lot of my subscribers are now quite good friends. So to meet meet up with those and stuff like that and, and have a good chat. Um, but one of the highlights was meeting um, Sam from Bullgrounds. 
because I say, yeah, a lot of... creepy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But his channel is, is is quite vast with the animals he keeps, the stick yeah. insects and everything. And we, you know, and the fact that he is very family orientated as well, and a lot of what he does. So that's one of the channels that we watch as a family life. Yeah, he's, he's he's a good bloke as well. Of course, Sam's another one. That if you need any help, he will. He oh, will help. He'll, he'll help you instantly. in any way he can. He's he's always been a big. I think Sam and I. I think we started roughly about the same time. There was a group of us, kind of seemed to start our journey roughly about the same time, and we all kind of ended up uh, becoming quite good friends. And um, so it's been really yeah, interesting yeah. sharing our journeys together and looking back uh, and having a laugh about some of the stuff that we've we've done. Uh, I want to digress back earlier on. We touched on mental health and well-being. I think there's, I know there's another YouTuber um, who was going to piece together a, a video on, and I think it's it's a subject that is very widely um, publicised at the moment. Yet still, people seem reluctant to actually speak. But everyone's talking about it, but not actually talking Dress about it. That, much, yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. wants to be seen to be understanding it, but nobody's actually really. So I want to touch upon that with you because I know you've always been able to express that you've, yeah, you've yeah. had issues. Um, oh, yeah. But I want, I want you to put, as opposed to me putting words out, you know, I, I will openly admit I've suffered depression, suicidal thoughts. I've had hallucinations, auditory and visual. I've been quite open about that. Not necessarily on my channel, but amongst my friend group. Yeah, um, yeah. Take it from here. You say what you think. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, yeah, there's there's been depression, um, se well, severe depression in my history. Um, anxieties. I was medicated for a long, long time. Took a lot of meds. Um, also, also, um, I did a lot of drug taking in the past as well, alongside those meds, and then abused the the meds that the doctor was giving as well. Um, I think that's all mental health related, trying to escape life. Um, the anxieties, um, as I've come off drugs, just went through the roof, absolutely through the roof. Um, I had a couple of, couple of close friends, and that was about it. Um, but I kind of struggled to do anything or go anywhere when I, was, when I come off them. And then what I did was I was in, in my flat at the time. And for me, I spent literally two, three months just in my flat um, just getting used to being by myself, which was extremely difficult because in 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 your in your, in your mental health world, um, for me, when we had the anxieties, I kind of surrounded myself with other people that had the same mental health issues. But more importantly, we were, we're dealing with them the same. We were all on drugs. Do you know what I mean? So for me to pull myself away from that, I did have to isolate for quite a long time. And the first two three weeks sort of um, being completely on my, this is, you know, this is why I wouldn't get another dog as well, because my dog that I've got, she was there for the whole lot, so I wouldn't want to sort of make her feel put out in any way, but she was up there for the whole lot, and she helped me no end, but for those two, three weeks, sort of rattling, and getting used to the whole new, sort of, you're by yourself, there's no, there's no points where you're hyped up thinking, how can I get money, or anything like that, it was really, really stressful. Um... <clears throat> But the mental health for me happened, oh, God, um, let me see now, 2011. I've got me, me well, that's the date when my granddad passed away. Um, I'd had mental health issues before that, but they were more, um, more be, me just being stupid, literally um, doing anything ridiculous. I'd, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it without even considering the consequences. Um, but, yeah, my granddad passed away, and then I hit hit a bit of depression, didn't really speak about it too much. Um, when I seen the doctor and he gave me some tablets, gave me a couple of days off work and all the rest of it. Um, then it started getting worse. So when I seen the doctor again, he changed the prescription that I was on, which made me ill. So then I had to have another prescription and you know how it goes. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and then it just got, it just got really, really bad. Probably about what, five, five or six years ago. Um, which then, I mean, I kind of, it's weird because when you've got mental health issues and you're doing drugs, it, it's, you look for almost the same type of person in a relationship, but then you want that person also to be the one in control. So if it's your fault, 
So mm. that's what I looked for, and I got it in the shape of my ex, um, who then went on to be extremely violent towards me and all the rest of it. Um, but that was just an absolute toxic, toxic relationship. So that, that obviously just sent me even further down the depression hill. Um, then I went, obviously, um, to get away from her and the situation, um, went homeless. So I spent a couple of weeks going around the churches. So the depression was around the churches. Um, when I was at the church, it weren't too bad because you had people there, people that actually actually gave two craps about you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but when in the day, you couldn't stay at the church. You'd get there, I think it was about eight o'clock at night, you'd get fed, fed, and then up at, I think it was about seven, out the door by half past seven. So from those periods in the day, that was extremely, yeah. extremely stressful, yeah. Um, but I think I've been been diagnosed over the years with um, the multiple, uh, not multiple, the split personality um, disorder, which uh, I think is just another name for bipolar in it nowadays. Yeah. Um, the severe depression, severe anxiety. And then he also said, because I was showing traits of quite a lot of different mental health disorders all in the one go, but none were quite strong enough to be treated. Yeah. So that's why that's why the um, split personality disorder got put down. But with the mental health, I mean, I was absolutely my own worst enemy, completely. Because you can kind of, you, you, you think in your mind, oh, everybody hates me. And then you start thinking of the scenarios where somebody hates you. Mm. And then a couple of days later, that scenario has actually happened to you, although it hasn't, hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. Um, which I found weird and um, that really really got to me but you know going to see a doctor as well and for the doctor to turn around to you and say you've got this you've got this and you've got this it's like you're thinking no I've just got depression that's it mm-hmm. you know it, but you can't see what's going on you know they can it, it's like me turning around to you and saying look Adam there's a duck on your head but you're not allowed to look in a mirror you've just got to believe me yeah and that is literally the same same thing with with the with the um, with the depression and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's been it's been a long hard road. I I, I had a very good friend who self medicated much much as I did, and I I kind of snapped out of that a lot earlier than he did. And I always remember him saying that when he did eventually find the, the strength with himself to stop using that he realized that all he'd been doing the whole duration of, of, of smoking the, the weed, all he'd literally done was suppress the issues that when he yeah, came out exactly. the other side, that all of that was still there to deal with. And I think people need to realize that when you're down, regardless of your age or, or stage of your life, I think, the hardest thing that any of us have ever done, uh, and you'll probably test it, is actually just reach out and uh, admit that you need somebody. Oh God, yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. It was, it was. I mean, I went to see psychiatrists. I went to a place called Coventry Mind. Did a lot of work with them. who we were oh, phenomenal. And then I went to the Recovery Project in Coventry as well, who were absolutely amazing. Um, but to get my mum back on side, you know, instead of just saying, mum, I've got mental health, and her thinking, oh, here comes another excuse, I kind of went and seen her and told her, I said, look, this is what's going on, and I do need your help, and I do need your support. Um, same with my best mates. Um, they kind of knew something was going on mentally. They've, they've never they've never turned their back on me, um, and um, I was chatting to them, and I said, look, this is happening. Um, but instead of them just going, oh, okay, they wanted to know more. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to know more and more and more. And I opened up and told them. And <clears throat> it was it was unbelievable. It was... Yeah, I think I think the, the point you were trying to make is that if, if somebody has the strength, the inner strength uh, to reach out, don't just dismiss it as them being moody or being a bit down. Actually take uh, it seriously because it could be the moment in their life that has the biggest impact uh, moving forward. As, as scary as it, as it sounds, it could literally mean life or death. Um, it was for me. Um, I was that low. 
and it was a scary period of, of my life and it still carries on to be as well to be completely honest um i still have my depression days i still have my days where you know nothing nothing really phases me or bothers me um those days i have to be extremely careful um because i'm, I'm fully aware of those days that i could possibly do something that could affect yeah. affect my life going forward so i do do in the back of my mind sort of keep myself on a level um but then the other thing to remember is you might, you know, okay, you've got to go to people for support. You've got to trust other people. But when you're feeling low, you're feeling depressed, I think the only person you can 100% rely on is, is, is yourself because people can let you and will let you down. And when you're feeling absolutely down, those people that said, oh, I'll always be for, there for you, you phone them and you think, right, well, you said, you said you'd always be there for me. But they're dealing with an issue for themselves. You know, they, they, they've got kids. They might talk one to the doctors, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you've got to have backup plans on it for yourself. You've got to kind of sit back and go, okay, recognize the traits leading up to a depression, depressive period, and then know what can help you get back up, if you like, get back up high again. Um, and then have something in, in play for when you are low. You know, something that you can do. Uh, mine is to come into the kitchen and, and literally just absorb myself into the inverts now, and that that helps. It's I was going to say, I was going to say, and I don't want to speak of a generic. I don't want to put everybody under the same umbrella, but I know personally there are a number of invert keepers and or YouTubers that suffer with their own uh, myriad of, yeah, you know, uh, health issues, mental health issues, problems. Um, and I know that for every single one of them that I am personally aware of, you know, the collection, that, you know, being big or small, is, what's say a distraction? It's not a distraction. It's a coping mechanism. It's a tool. It's a way of occupying yourself with something that brings pleasure and enjoyment to try and counteract the, the, the inner thoughts that could otherwise lead to, you know, a breakdown or a bad patch or, you know. Um, definitely definitely i think i think with the, with the the mental health in the invert hobby i think it's because you know things like centipedes and spiders in the public eye are kind of pushed away mm -hmm. and they're kind of pushed away forgotten about or, or looked or looked down upon in, in pet keeping in general and i think we we associate with that we associate with the fact mm -hmm. that we've been pushed away we've been looked down on we've been let down um and you know, at the end of the day as well, the spider, most of the inverts don't move much. They, they kind of just sit there until you feed them. So when you're going around your collection, they're not bouncing off all over the place. They're very relaxed, very in their own little space. And I think, I think you draw on that and you see how content they are. And I think that rubs off on you. Um, but I you thought you were can't... trying to imply that we're all lazy there for a minute. That we all just... <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> lockdown especially <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad we were able to discuss that and hopefully if anybody is watching this and is feeling alone in the world you're, you're really not alone or are you would be surprised the amount of people that have been through similar or are going yeah. through you know yeah. reach out as, as scott said there you know the, the person you may reach out to the most happens to have something going on that day it's not a personal it can't be bothered with you it's just that sometimes you are going to have to find a second a backup plan, as you were I mean, saying. My, there. my inbox is always open to everybody. Um, Absolutely. But, I mean, I'd just like to say, as, as well as the stigma around depression and anxiety, um, going back to my ex, I was also in, in a violent relationship where I was the victim. So if there's any males out there that are going through domestic violence, then inbox me. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not alone, and you're certainly not the only one. You know, and I mean, I'm not the, you know, I'm not the smallest of lads either which kind of shocks quite a lot of people. So if, if you're that person, please you know, inbox me, reach out, uh, and, and we'll certainly try and get help, that's for sure. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Um, we're going to try and sort of, obviously it's, it's not a subject we want to shy away from, but we do want to move on. Uh, we do want to move on, but we are both more than happy to, if anybody's watching this and gone, bloody hell, you've touched, you've touched me. Uh, I, I want to speak to you guys because I think you possibly could understand what I'm going through. By all means, inbox one or both of us, or we will we will always do our best to support in any way we can. 
just, just remember, we might not be able to get back to you straight away. Though. Yeah, it, it might not be immediate, so but panic. I mean, I, I work 12 hour days, so if you message me on a work day, it is going to be late in the evening, but it doesn't mean I'm ignoring you. Even if the message is seen, it doesn't mean I'm ignoring you. I've just not got the opportunity to reply at that time. Yeah. Now, Scott, you have 940 likes or thereabout on your page. <laughs> you do indeed, <laughs> sir. Amongst them, and these are, these are absolute corkers, farting. <laughs> this this one I absolutely loved. How do stones get in my shoes? These are oh, yeah. genuine. <laughs> these are genuine pages you've lighted. Intercontinental ballistic missile. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I can understand. I've been on Facebook for a long time. I can see that. But <laughs> one, 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 that, one that piqued <laughs> my interest was eat a box of dicks. Now I was curious. Is this a desire? Or is this something yeah, you've no, done? This, it was, um, I think, it, it does ring a bell. I'm just trying to remember it. I think it was a comedy page from, oh, God, five, six, seven years ago. I, w- I, would, <laughs> I would recommend you maybe at some point <laughs> look through and, uh, yeah, I'll leave it to eat a box of dicks. I'll leave uh, it <laughs> I've got a wee yes or no for you. Just simple yes or no. Pineapple on a pizza. Yes. Good man. Um, have you ever sat looking at invert sites for just endless periods of time with actually no money to spend? No. I won't do it. <laughs> it makes me feel depressed. I'd rather go looking when I've got money because you see something you think, they've got it. And then when you've got <laughs> the money, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll just try and avoid it. Have you ever lost an invertebrate in the house? Yes. Does the missus know? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> oh, Have you ever... Do you want you, the you go... Yeah, digress. Go on, tell us. <laughs> Dig ball, Joel. Do the Komodo tanks? Yeah. Square, square top mesh lid. The yeah. lucky mess mechanism I got on this, what I got given it to me, was slightly cracked. And I thought, that'd be all right. A H. Gigas adult female managed to escape. And um, the missus phoned me at work. I was almost been about 30 miles away. So my best mate, who hates spiders, can't stand the sight of them, had to come round. He catch cupped it and sorted it all out for me till I got back. And then the other one was a flag tail centipede, which the missus phoned me up and I had no alternative but to come home and sort that one out. Oh, man. Yeah, LIP's Grande the area or whatever it is. Yes, yeah, the Grande. Yeah, she, I thought she was going to kill me that day. <laughs> um, we've had um, the alpha lax uh-huh. a, a sling a tiny sling uh, I mean Jesus walked on water <laughs> this thing would run across the top without <laughs> even battering eyelids it started off on this this table and within a second it flew across the table like Hussein Bolt literally jumped and bungeed straight down to the floor like bloody James Bond and it was over by the skirting board within seconds I was like Oh my god! Managed to catch up it, sort it out. But the H map, the H map escape. See you dare to blink. The H map escaped, and I had to have kitchen cupboards out, the, water, the cooker out, and everything, while shouting at the missus, "Stay the kitchen!" <laughs> so she was like, "Oh, she didn't even have to think twice. She knew something dangerous and got out, you know." Um, but when that escaped, it was like I stopped for a second because the H map was that quick. And agile, I just that for that couple of split seconds, I was like, "Wow!" And then I was like, oh, "Spider got out!" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but for those split that couple of split seconds, it was just like, "Wow!" And I was just stood in absolute sort of admiration <laughs> at how, how agile and fast this spider was. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> uh, have you ever walked out of the cinema? No, almost. Very almost. What well, film? No. What was Titan- it? Titanic. Titan- <laughs> Have you ever pretended to be asleep while the baby was crying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had to wear the missus underpants because you ran out of your own? No. You liar. Have you ever had a what? Anyway. Eh? I'd wear them anyway if you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Have you, ever, 
Have you ever had a water fight which resulted in you tipping an entire bottle of water over your missus' head, much to the disgust of your friend who thought she was about to punch you in the face? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be the surprise of things I know. Have you ever <laughs> taken an... <laughs> Have you ever taken a naked selfie on your phone? Not completely naked. All right, okay. There you go. That's. I think that. Oh no, I've got more. Have you ever eaten the misses or and the kids' snacks and then denied it? Yes, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, Taylor, that, Taylor gets stuck all the time though. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, blame it on the kids. <laughs> so, just moving away from that. Who or what it could could be a what? Who who or what have been the biggest influences in in your life or or and your YouTube journey? We'll go with life first. Who's been your biggest influences in life? Ooh. Granddad. What have we got it? Um, uh, my stepdad. Although you know, um, I won't go into details. You know, because my mm. mom. Um, but there were some issues. And I was a kid with my stepdad and stuff like that. But looking back now, um, you know, um, I've got my fishing, which was down to him. I've got my Star Trek as well, which I love Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. That was interesting that he sparked off. Um, but as a child, child, my granddad with walks and um, the allotments and stuff like that. Um, as I've got older, it's things that my granddad has said. And the way he was, and the way he sort of um, went about life, is ringing very, very much true in himself. And how, how you <laughs> people, um, how you, yeah, and how you deal with situations and stuff like that. It's he, he did pass away in 2011, but I do sort of feel, you know, his memory around me a lot. Um, so yeah, you know, before if, you know, if something needed doing, I'd just go and do it quick. Yeah. But now I hear those words, you know, if a job's worth doing, <laughs> worth doing right. Think, think twice, cut once. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, things like that. So, um, but yeah, and then obviously uh, my mum as well, sort of, especially as I've come off the drugs, um, looking back how much she loved me from a child when I was misbehaving, when I was being brought home from school and then all the drugs and stuff like that, and she still carried on loving me. Coming off the drugs, I can't of then realized and look back at that and she sort of taught me sort of how to love properly and how to love the right things without her even knowing it <laughs> yeah um youtube there's there's so many it's unreal um there's yourself there's gar reese um both of you that you've helped tremendously on the channel um, turn your phone turn your phone <laughs> so yeah yeah adam was literally the first person that said uh, you know, if you turn your phone, you'll fill the picture. I was like, huh? <laughs> um, but then, I mean, a lot of the admins I've got on the on the invert group, um, Kieran from Alternative Inverts, um, Amy, Pet Rock and Roll, they are, and obviously Sidex as well on the Invert Kings, and they're very, very, very strong people to, for me to sort of chat to as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. All, all, bril all definitely. brilliant people and all brilliant channels as well, of course. What would Fantastic. be your dream job if you could if you could pick any job for yourself in the world? What would it be? Um, I really enjoy my work. I really enjoy what I do. Um, I'm a hydraulic engineer, um, which isn't as posh as it sounds. Um, if, the if there's a hydraulic hose blows, I go, I take the hose off, and I'll put a new one on, make a new one. Um, Nowhere near as simple as that some days because the pressure ratings and all the rest of it. It could be a bin lorry. It it, it could be like a, a big, massive soil separator. It could be a um, recycling centre. It could be in a factory. So my job that I'm doing, I do absolutely love. And it takes me to some absolutely incredible, mind-blowing sort of factories and places and <laughs> farmyards, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. And then in the middle of a Coventry city on a jackhammer, the two hoses that go to the compressor, changing one of them in the middle of the city, and you've got your lights going, and you know you're driving past everybody else is walking, nobody else is allowed to drive down there to where you're going. You know, I, I love my job. I do love my job. Um, I would swap it. I would swap it if um, if the spider shop said, "Oh, we're moving to Coventry, start drawing a job." Um, I'd be like, uh, "Yeah, 
I'll feed your spiders all day long. Um, <laughs> if I could do YouTube and run the group and um, have the collection and get paid for it, I would do that at the drop of a hat. That is just yeah, an absolute imaginary job. No, that would be good, wouldn't it? That'd be amazing. Hey, do you have a favourite horror movie? That's an old oh. goodie question. A favourite horror movie. Oh. Are you more into your chick flicks? No, it's just there's so many different horror movies to pick from. It, it's... I mean, mm, Freddy Krueger, um, the whole series of films, that was very big for me when I was a kid because it was scary. And so was Jaws. That was absolutely ridiculously scary when I was a child. Now you look at it and you watch it and you can see the movements and you can see the plastic, you know? Yeah, no, I try next to you. Yeah, as a child, that scared me. That really got the EBGBs. It really got me scared. Yeah, yeah. But nowadays, it's like um, the psychological thrillers, um, the ones that what, which involve pol- poltergeists and stuff like that. But um, I've probably got to a stage, probably similar to yourself, Adam. Now, where you don't, you kind of watch the film. Ah. It's just if it's just gore, if it's just you know that type of um, saw type of thing, it's not that scary. Uh, no. It's those ones that can really, really grip you and really get you sort of into the drama, into the psycho- psychological side of it. You know. Yeah, I think you, really you only really watch you only really watch the saw, so you can go, oh yeah, you know, like with with the boys getting all the rings pulled out. I always remember sitting thinking, uh, yeah, oh, exactly. that. but it, you say exactly. it's not scary. It's it's more of like that would hurt like a cinema. Yeah, yeah. Um. If you could have any superhero ability or combination of superhero abilities, what would they be? Um, Superman's ability to fly. Yeah, um, cool. that would be excellent. Uh, what would be your top three bands? What's your musical choices? Ooh, um, Nirvana. But say number two, ooh, the Cadillac Three. Uh, and they're American band. Uh, they like a bit, I suppose, a country and western go, well, country music, go rock music. You want to sing um, one? Give us an idea of what it sounds like. Um, nah, I can I can sing ish, but I get quite, I get really, really shy about that. Uh, thirdly, oh, see, third is is such, you know, the Sepultura, there's Machine Head. Um, not Lady Gaga because I know you like Lady Gaga. Not Lady Gaga, no. Um, according to I'm your like, li- according to your likes, you like Lady Gaga. I do. Um, I think I don't. I can't listen to her, um, but her is a character. Um, because I grew up uh, listening to people like Marilyn Manson and stuff like that. You know, proper rock. Uh, when I seen him live, but she is like the pop female version mm-hmm. of him. Um, but there's two bands that really, you know, I don't listen to um, a lot. Um, I do like what they're doing, um, like Lady Gaga, but I don't exactly like the music per se. But Lady Gaga and the Arctic Monkeys are both, oh, yeah. are both two people and a well, one person in a band, sorry, that can literally go from genre to genre to genre. Literally, they've been doing that one genre the whole complete time they've been pop stars which i think is absolutely amazing i mean lady gaga can go from you know one genre to another like it's absolutely nothing which I, which you know even if you don't like the woman even if you don't like what she what she sings about you've got to admire the fact that she can do that and the character that she is um but yeah that's that's why i like lady gaga Right, this is a, a what would best describe you. So, what song would best describe you? Oh. Oh. I don't know. No, nope, pass. What chocolate bar would best describe you? Sorry, the dog is being a pain in the bum down here. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say one of the, one of the, the chocolate and chilli bars. Chocolate chili bar. What spider would best describe you? LP. LP. What invert would best describe you? Oh. Oh, I'd say an assassin ball. Nice. 
Uh, what Star Wars character would best describe you? Luke Skywalker. <laughs> what flavour of jelly would best describe you? Oh, the old comforting strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> If they were to turn uh, Scott's inverse into a musical, who would play you other than you? Oh, Jason Statham. Nice, nice. <laughs> I, can ima- I can imagine it. All the, all, they're, all doing music- they're all doing musicals <laughs> yeah. now, so... Right, so this is a quick fire, quick fire round. Just you've got to snap, right? Okay. Guilty pleasure. Oh, chocolate. Worst habit. Picking my nose. Last thing you Googled on your phone. Oh, um, I think that was the Six Eyes Sand Spider Care. Favourite non invert related website? Uh, Red Tube. <laughs> other, other hobbies other than watching? Um, fishing. Savoury or sweet? Sweet. Biggest fear? Um, drowning. Uh, best friend? Aaron Marshall. Three people you would most love to have a meal with, celebrity or non-celebrity? Uh, I think that would be yourself, Goris and Kurt Cobain. Quality. Uh, best impression? Um, that would be uh, the only one I can almost do is Eddie from Out of the Bottom, which is wow, Richie, we're having a show. Get the camera. I can't do it. Now. You remember my famous watch gang? Um, <laughs> last whim by. Um, true spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Place you would love to visit. America. Any particular sport? Um, Florida, Texas. I'd love um, to go I'd to New Orleans. Go um, New Orleans, yeah, the, the whole caboodle. Yeah. Uh, next purchase? Ooh. The enemy's going to be watching this. Mm, right. possibly, we'll skip, we'll skip poss- that. possibly, possibly the true spot. True, true spot. A, a, a nice bunch of flowers. Favorite yes. food? Oh, oh, Italian. <laughs> Anything Italian. All right, okay. What's hairy on the outside, soft and wet in the inside, starts with a C and ends in a T? Uh, pass. <laughs> it's a coconut. A coconut. <laughs> that for you, sir, is the end of this journey. I think we've found out that you like to soak the missus with uh, water cannons. You're a very open fella, and you're there for absolutely anybody that needs a shoulder or near to listen to. And Scott, I like a box of dicks. <laughs> and a box of box and dicks. <laughs> can never work out how those stones get in your shoes no. anyway Scott <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure this has been a brilliant journey uh, I think we've we've kind of gone up down round and round and ended up, can, ended up right back at gobbling some cock so thank you ever so much <laughs> you are a true gent and I can only thank you so much for being part of this it's been one I always say it but I've, I've genuinely been I think we've spoken for quite some time about trying to get the opportunity to do this one uh, so yeah, it really yeah. has meant a lot to me I think one of the reasons I wanted to do it is because I knew it was we could touch upon a subject that you were very prepared to discuss and for me that's yeah, yeah. Uh, something that I'm glad we've been able to to discuss in this so anyway please 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 support Scott subscribe to his channel you're never ever ever going to regret it uh, thank you thank you thank you thank you and yeah, goodbye from me, the Invertibarian, and goodbye from Scott. Thank you very much, Celia. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Once more, a huge thank you to Scott. Please, obviously, check out his channel and do subscribe. It is awesome. And thank you ever so much for watching. Please do like, comment, share, and subscribe. Be good, be kind, take care of yourselves, and goodbye for now. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.